This is the second Professional Evil Fundamentals video in the AWS series. In the previous video, we spent some time discussing identities and policies, and how we often see broad permission sets being applied within policies that are inadvertently granting more access than the people intended within their AWS account. This time, we're going to focus in a little bit more on roles. A role is a method of allowing a user to get a different level of access within an AWS account compared to what they would normally have. What happens is, is when a user assumes the role, they get a brand new identity. They become that role. In essence, if Bob assumed the admin role, he is no longer Bob. He is admin. Therefore, because it's a new identity, he has a brand new set of policies applied to his identity, and those policies are what enforced as long as he is that role. Now, these are temporary, they are not permanent, but what that means is that a person has to assume the role, and the time frame they're allowed to stay in that role is kind of subjective depending on how they're using it. If they're using the API or CLI, the default amount of time a person can stay in the role is about an hour, but that can be changed. The console is really until the person chooses to unassume the role or their console session times out in general. In order for a user to be able to assume a role, two things must be true. First, the user must meet all of the conditions in the role's trust policy. Now, the default conditions are that anyone from a specific AWS account can assume the role. This is the sample that we're showing up on the screen in that little block of JSON. In this case, anybody in the account 01234567890 can assume the role. Root, in this case, is not a specific user, but the root of the account itself. Now, this could be filtered down further from anybody in the account to specific users or roles. And in addition, other special conditions can be placed in the trust policy. These are things like the user needed to authenticate with MFA, or they need to include some specific alphanumeric code with the, their API calls when they make those requests. Now, one important note about the AWS account and the trust policy. This can be from the same account that the role is in, or from some remote account. It doesn't need to be from the exact same location. Now, the default trust policy might seem that it's a little permissive, but in order for the user to assume that role, the user still needs to have been granted a special permission within their policies, and that's the STS Assume Role Permission. Now, that could have been assigned to one specific role, or to all roles. With well-defined and minimally scoped minimally scope policies, who has that permission should be well controlled and very well filtered. However, as we stated in the previous video, what we often see is that policies are way too broad and that users have been inadvertently been granted the STS assume role star or any role permission assigned to them. Let's walk through the process of how AWS determines if a user can assume a role or not. On the right, we have a role named I am admins, and the trust policy for this role has been filtered down so that only the user named Bob has the ability to assume the role. Now, if Bob assumes this role, he has full control over the I am service within the AWS account. He could create new roles, he could create new users, he could change user passwords, etc. Now, to assume that role, we need to look at the identities in the account as well. On the left, we have a user named Bob. There he is. Bob absolutely meets the trust policy for the role. Unfortunately, Bob does not have the STS assume role permission assigned to him. Therefore, he can't assume any role, let alone I am admins. Next up, we have the user named John. Now, John does have the STS assume role for I am admins specifically granted to his account, his user. Unfortunately, he is not Bob. And therefore, even though he has the permission, he does not meet the trust policy, and he still can't assume that role. Next up, we have a group named Full Admins. F anybody who is a member of Full Admins has been granted the permission STS Assume Role Star. They can assume any role in the account. However, unless the member of that group is named Bob, they still can't assume the role because they are not Bob. A group is not an identity. Last up, we have the role named Remote Admins. Now, this has been granted people from a different account, not the same account that the I'm Admins role is in, but a different account, have been granted the ability to assume any role within this AWS account. But once again, 
they are not Bob and therefore they cannot assume the role. Therefore, no one in the account has the ability to assume this I am admin role. In order for it to be able to be assumed, one of two things would have to happen. One, Bob would have to be either granted the ability or the permission STS assume role, either to the I am admins role or all roles, or Bob would have to become a member of full admins. At that point, he would be able to assume the I am admins role and use its permissions. Let's run through a little simulation showing items we look for when we're evaluating roles in AWS environments. And then we'll show how these issues could turn into potential problems. On the right, we have a role and its name is I am admins. In this case, the trust policy is set so that anyone in the account has the potential to assume this role. It's relying on permissions assigned to individual identities to control that level of access. Now, we've identified this role because it has a very powerful set of permissions assigned to it. It has the ability to do anything within the IAM service as long as the permission it's using has role in its name. Therefore, if you are assuming this role, you have the potential to create other roles, you have the potential to delete roles or modify roles. So now that we've identified this very powerful role, we want to see who can assume it and make sure that that's valid or not. The first group that we run into is a group called Full Admins. They've been granted actually the permission to do anything they want within the AWS account. Their permissions are star star. So based upon their name and their permission set, we're going to assume that it doesn't really make a difference if they assume the I am admins role or not. They could do whatever they want just by the fact that they are a member of Full Admins. So we move past that. We would flag that for a different issue, but that's a different talk. Next up we have a user and his name is Bob. Bob has been explicitly granted the permission to assume the I am admins role. Therefore, we're going to state that this is probably okay. We're not going to worry about this one too much as we're trying to look for bigger issues. We might flag it, but probably not because once again it's been explicitly assigned. Now we move to the next group on the list, and it's actually a role and not a group. This role is named Remote Users, and the reason we would look at this in lots of detail is because its trust policy actually states that anybody from a remote account could assume this role. Now, we're not sure what the controls are in that remote account. Maybe it's all managed over there. We don't know. We have no idea who has the ability to assume roles within that account. But they have the ability to assume the role I am admins. Now, because that has been explicitly stated within the permission policy, we wouldn't flag this as that potential issue of they have too many permissions. But since we don't know how things are working in the remote account, we would still flag it for a follow-up and try and access the, that remote account to get more information. But last up, we have the real issue, John. John somehow has gained the permission to assume any role. We don't know exactly where or why, but we do see that all of the other permissions he's been granted don't have anything to do with IAM or anything else that looks like really he should have this role. And we would immediately flag that and notify our client about the problem. And why do we say that it's a problem, especially with this role? Well, John, by default, doesn't have much in the way of access. But because he can assume the I am admins role, what he would do is assume the role. And then, because of its permissions, he's going to create a brand new role. Remember, John's old permissions are gone. Because he has assumed the role, he is now I am admins and has those permissions. Therefore, he can create any roles. So he does it, creates a new role called new admins. He puts the trust policy on that role, filtered to himself, and he grants the permission policy star star. It is now a complete admin. Now, because John has the assume role star permission and he meets the trust policy of this new admins role, he assumes that role, and he is now a full administrator within the AWS account itself.